Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this FPGA Masterclass Series, uh, 21 Days Challenge. I warmly welcome you to the session. Uh, thank you for your current time and thank you, thanks for coming today. And uh, like, uh, before we go into the session, like I would like to thank uh, the Skill AP on the Pradesh State Skill Development Corporation for their support for this program. Okay. So I uh, will start with the quote of the day. Like. Uh, for, for all the 21 days, I would like to start this uh, program with a quote. And today's quote will be like, uh, the formal education uh, will make you living and the self-education will bring you fortune. Okay. This is a quote uh, by Jim Rohn, like one of the quotes which I love. And uh, uh, you, you, like if you want to make more money or if you want to grow uh, like uh, uh, on your career, or then you, you should not stop learning at any point of time. You have to learn daily. Every aspect of life, you have to learn. Okay. So with this, we'll start the session. So what you will learn on this 21 days. Okay. So before that, I would like to welcome uh, the early comers. And uh, let me check for the chat. Welcome Sailendra Singh. Welcome Abdul. Uh, welcome Aishwarya. Welcome Dharani. Welcome Abhilash. Welcome. Good evening, Anil Kumar. Good evening, Savane Sir Rao. Good evening, Anuj. Good evening, Hitesh. Good evening, Sri Leka. Good evening, Shubhu. Good evening, Hussain. Tejaswani. Good evening, Tarik. Good evening, Akul. Akula Ravi. Good evening, Nirmal, Nirmal Vikash. Mani, Manikanda. Madikanda, Veera Babu, good evening, Nitya, good evening, Anil Kumar, good evening, Saranjeevi, good evening, welcome, Kartikeyan, good evening, Himanshu, good evening, okay, so uh, thank you for your time and thanks for coming, like uh, we will start the session and uh, so what you will learn on this 21 days, okay? this is a 21 day challenge. So we will begin with FPGA, like today on day one, we will be covering up introduction to FPGA, right? So there are a lot of processes in the market, like we have uh, microprocessors, microcontrollers, DSP processors, FPGAs, system on chip and uh, GPUs and CPUs are there. Why you have to choose FPGA? That we will be covering up today. And what is the architecture of FPGA? What is the history of FPGA? So that uh, these are the topics which we will be covering up today. So we will be covering up introduction to FPGA today on day one. On day two, we will be covering up the introduction to BHDL. Like we will be covering up the syntax, the methodology and how to create a project on Xilinx ISC as well as in Vivado. That we will be covering up on day two. Okay. Just how to write a simple half order program. Uh, we will be going through the syntax line by line. Okay, I'll be explaining the syntax. I'll try to make the code simple and I will try to make the language simple. So that will be covering up on day two. And day three, uh, we will be covering up operators and data flow modeling. That will be covering up on day three. And day four is structural and behavioral modeling. So, uh, and day five, like how to create a test bench on Xilinx ISC as well as on Vivado. So that will be covering up on day five. On day six, how to design a Spartan 6 FPGA development board. So, uh, like uh, how to design your own board. So, what are how to collect specifications, how to collect data sheets, how to collect uh, the schematics, and uh, how to analyze the data sheets, what information you have to go through the data sheet, uh, how to analyze the pin diagrams, pin details, and how to connect with the schematics and how to bring that schematics to a schematic layout and uh, and then what are the design considerations you have to take care on PCB while routing the PCB. Uh, design considerations you have to take care of on schematics uh, and uh, like uh, the, the complete board bring process, board, board bring up process. So that will be covering up on uh, day six. So that whatever the board you take, like uh, whenever, whenever you take a board, man, board manufacture from uh, Xilinx or Vigilant Inc, so you could have a knowledge on this and you could easily use it for your own purpose. Okay? You could identify what are the peripherals and uh, you could identify the pins and you could identify the package 
uh, so it will be easier for you to migrate the board migrate the board so whatever the manufacturer is okay if you know this process you could easily use any type of ports from any type of manufacturer so that will be covering up on day six okay so uh, on uh, day seven like day seven we will be covering up the fpga programming uh, based on VHDL, how to blink an LED, switch, relay and buzzer. So, we will be covering up the schematics, we will be going through the code line by line and we will be compiling and we will be downloading the code to an FPGA board. I have used a Spartan 6 board here on day 7 okay? and the code is on VHDL. So, this uh, this 21 days is based on VHDL, we are not going to cover up the very long. Maybe in future we could have a very long session, okay? but this session is about covering up on big HDL and only related to Xilinx ports like on, on Spartan 6 and uh, Zinc FPGA. Okay? So I have not covered up the uh, Altera. Okay? This session will be on Xilinx and big HDL and C language and Python. Okay? On day 8, uh, we will be covering up on UART programming. Like uh, like I will explain you how UART works, how serial port works, what is the timing diagram of the UART and uh, like how to how to set a baud rate and uh, how to configure the clock and how to write the code on big HDL, on big HDL and how to download the program and check the output. So day 8 will be covering up the UART because it acts as a basic to interface with the GPS or a GSM or with any UART kind of device like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So that acts as a basic. So you are programming on day eight. On day nine, uh, we will be covering up LCD and seven segment display. Okay. So we will be covering up the four bit mode, how to connect uh, LCD on four bit mode to an FPGA and the seven segment display to an FPGA. We will be covering up how to write the code for that, how to configure the UCF file and how to download the program. Okay. Day 10, uh, we will be covering up the SPA ADC and SPA DAC programming. Okay. SPA ADC and how to interface uh, temperature sensor and how to like uh, how to generate a waveform on DAC. So that will be covering up on day 10. Day 10, day 11 is a project. So uh, like we, have, we are going to cover up a home automation project using FPGA. We are going to control uh, the relay by using a mobile phone. Okay. A mobile phone is connected to an FPGA board via Bluetooth and we are going to switch on and switch off the relay. The code will be on BHDL. Okay. So on day 11, so we are going to cover up a project on FPG. Day 12, we are going to cover up Internet of Things. So I have divided into two parts, part 1 and part 2. Part 1, working with the Wi-Fi module, ESP32 module. And part 2 will be working with the configuring the temperature sensor on the cloud. Okay. So day, day 12 is of Internet of Things using FPGA. And day 13, like uh, we will be covering up Internet of Things using FPG, the part 2 we will be covering up with uh, the Things Speak Cloud, okay? sending temperature data to the cloud. So, on day 14, uh, we will be covering up motor control using FPG. So, here we will be covering up the DC motor and the uh, uh, DC motor and the stepper motor. But I will also come up with a case study for an induction motor for triple e students so this session will be can also be used for triple e students and the basic if you want to control a motors using fpga then you could also attend this triple e students can also attend this program okay so motor control using fpga will be covering how to generate a pwm and how to control a stepper motor as well as the dc motor okay i'll also come up with case study for an induction motor so day 15 is embedded system design using fpga by using c language okay by using Xilinx Platform Studio, EDK2. So, we will be covering up how to design an embedded system using FPGA and how to create a project and using a C program and a big Day 16, how to do an image processing algorithm on a Spartan 6 FPGA. This is also a combination of C and the big The big will be some IP core. We will be using an inbuilt IP core okay. and meeting filter like the algorithm will be on C language. We will be using conversion filter and uh, like we will be applying a, uh, uh, sorry, a medium filter will be applying a normal medium filter algorithm for a certain pepper noise and the output will be viewed on the MATLAB or uh, like uh, we will be pushing the image through a serial port. It, the output will be visualized on a VBGI or a Visual Basic GUI or a MATLAB GUI. Okay. 
So day 17 will be we will be covering up the age detection on FPG. Okay. So we will be covering up the age detection on FPG. This is this uh, day 15 and day 16 and day 17 is was based on C language. How to program FPG using C language okay, for Xilinx FPG. And we will be using the inbuilt IP codes of VHDL. Okay. So day 18. Again, I will be programming using C language. The previous version will, is on VHDL and day 18 is, is on IoT programming of FPG using C language, sending temperature data to the cloud. Okay. So, day 19, how to debug the design by using Chipscope Pro. Okay. So, that will be checking, we will be going through step by step process of Chipscope Pro, how to design and debug your project using Chipscope Pro, the tool. And day 20 and day 21 is based on Python. So, it is based on zinc and uh, we will be using a board uh, like called pink pink version which is manufactured from uh, digital and uh, it's a zinc fpga uh, we will be downloading the operating system to the F zinc fpga to the arm core and we will be running the jupyter notebook on an fpga and writing the python code on it okay so we will be using the image processing so we will be installing the open cv on the fpga and we will be doing the image processing algorithms so day 21, a day 20 implementation like YOLO object addition on FPGA that will be covering up on day 21. So on this 21 days challenge, we will be going through the bigger chills C and the Python. Okay. So definitely this will bring you, uh, the may, will make you a master. I will try to uh, simplify as much as possible and I will try to make it like, uh, I will try to give it as break, uh, break, break on the steps and I will try to give a better learning experience. Okay. And day 21, like on the end of the day, like you will be getting the certificates okay, on the graduation day. So 21, you will be getting the certificates. So uh, for the 30 day internship program, so we have some additional content for them on the learning management solution. On day 22, we will be covering up the real time edge detection using Zinc FPG on Pink platform that is based on Python. Okay. On day 23, is again based on Python. For real time moving object detection using Zinc FPGA, okay, the code will be on Python code. Uh, you could download all the codes from the LMS portal and discrete value transformation. Like this is on C language, how to implement a discrete value transformation for a Spartan 6 FPG. So, this is all this red color starts denotes that it is a project. Okay, So, discrete value transformation using Spartan 6 FPG. Uh, how to implement uh, value transformation because value transformation is a complex mathematical calculation Okay, on a Spartan 6 FPG using C language. Day 25, we will be implementing image segmentation like k-means segmentation, k-means algorithm on a Spartan 6 FPG that is also a C language. On day 26, is some introduction to Vivid of Design Suit. Like this will be much more advanced version. Like uh, we will be implementing LED UART and uh, on Vivid of Design Suit. The previous version we will be covering up on Xilinx AFC. This on Vivid of Design Suit and uh, 28 on machine learning, how to run a machine learning application on Pink and 29. We will be covering up open CD for image processing and video processing that will be on day 29 and day 30 will be the conclusion and feature of your side. Okay, so this is what you will learn on the 30 day internship program. Extra bonus, like okay. So uh, uh, before we go into the topic, I will give you a short introduction about Pantac and about me, and we'll start the session. So about Pantac, we basically manufacture embedded motherboards, like we manufacture DSP boards, FPGA boards and the microcontroller boards we have like if you want to know more about our products like the boards uh, you just visit our website pantexsolutions.net okay. so uh, like we also manufacture a lot of sensors like uh, uh, EEG sensors and uh, gesture recognition sensors and uh, we also manufacture AI development boards okay. our vision is to help 10 million students to learn the technology in an easy way okay. so that's our mission vision so, uh, to know more about our products and services, just visit our website, Pantax Solutions. Right about me, uh, my name is MK Jeevarajan. So, uh, I completed my master's in the year 2004 from College of Engineering, Gindi, from Chennai. And my uh, bachelor degree from Government College of Engineering, Barbur in 2002. So far, I have around 16 years of experience. Uh, I am responsible for the research and development team in Pantac and I take care of the board design like uh, I have worked on various microcontrollers like A051, PIC, AVR, um, and FPGs I have worked with both Xilinx and Altera like um, the Spartan 6 series and Vertex series and the Zinc series and uh, I, I am responsible 
are responsible for schematic design, layout design, and bringing up the boards and writing down the algorithms. Okay, I have worked on various image processing algorithms. So this session is about sharing my knowledge with you. So uh, I hope it will be useful for you. If you want to connect me on LinkedIn, I'm send, I have provided my LinkedIn link here. Like I will also send it on the chat now. So uh, you could send me a connection request. Okay, I'm happy to connect and happy to help. Okay, so I'm giving my uh, LinkedIn link in the chat box now. So okay. So, uh, if you want to connect me on LinkedIn, send me a connection request. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to connect. Okay. Okay. So, coming to the announcement, like the attendance link will be available at 8:30 p.m. Okay. So, for a free certificate, free e-certificate, minimum attendance of 18 days is required for this 21 days challenge. Okay. Attendance link, which is will be valid for two hours. So, even after the session, you could fill up the attendance form. Okay. So, for internship candidates, no attendance record, it will be accessed from the LMS portal. By default, like when you, when, when, whenever you access the LMS portal, the attendance will be calculated automatically by the software itself. Okay. So, the recorded video streaming, uh, like uh, some recorded sometimes on recorded videos streaming for the session, as it involves more hardware to improve the learning experience. Okay, sometimes selling IAC or EDK will take uh, 10 to 15 minutes of time to compile. Okay, so uh, this session is just fully a practical session. Uh, we are going to have a practical session. So sometimes it may take more time for compiling. So in order to make that, like we cut the compiling time and we make it as a video and stream that video. So that uh, sometimes we'll be using a recorded video streaming. The next session, for the you could jot down the questions and like when I am live, like you could ask the questions back again. So. Uh, we will put our maximum effort uh, to transfer the knowledge to you. Only Xilinx FPGA tools will be covered. Okay, there is also okay. there is also disclaimer that we are not associated with Xilinx. Okay, so all the trademarks and all the logos which is used in the presentation uh, are owned by the respective owners. Okay, so uh, so coming to FPGA. So are you ready to learn? If you are ready to learn, just type ready to learn in the chat box. I want to see RTL in the chat box, ready to learn. Okay. Let us make some interaction. Uh, I'm waiting for a chat. If you are ready to learn, just type RTL in the chat box, ready to learn. Ready to learn. Okay. I'm waiting for a chat. So it will take some time for a delay, like uh, it reach me around, it takes 10 to uh, 10 to 15 seconds to 20 seconds to reach me, if you are ready to learn. Okay, thank you Venkata Krishnan, thank you Sanjay, thank you Abhishek, thank you Sandeep, thank you Jeshal, thank you Nand Kishore Patil, thank you Lokesh, thank you Joseph, thank you Manoj Kumar, thank you Vinay. Thank you, Tamil Vanan. Thank you, Devakar Singh. Thank you, Raju. Thank you, Jishan. Thank you, Chandrika. Thank you, Pavan Kumar. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. So, why FPGA? Right? So, we want a strong why. Why we are going for FPGA? There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of controllers available in the market. Right? We have uh, microprocessors. Okay. We have microprocessors. We have microcontrollers. We have digital signal processors and we have CPLDs and we have FPGAs and we have general purpose processor like Pentium 4, uh, AMD and uh, like a general purpose processor. We also have a GPU, graphic processing unit and we also have ASICs, application specific integrated circuits and we also have system on chip, okay? the Snapdragon kind of processors which is used for mobile phones. Which is used for mobile phones because nowadays the smartphone nowadays the, the smartphones which you have are the supercomputers in the year 1996 and 2000 right the super the so-called supercomputers is now your mobile phones the latest version i'm not sure about the version like the one which is available for 60,000 or 70,000 like they have a gaming which is meant for gaming they have a switch the SOC which does all the job okay so uh so what so why we are going for an FPGA? So there are a lot of things, a lot of processes in the market. 
So we'll be covering it one by one. Like if you check microprocessor, microcontrollers, there are a lot of manufacturers out there. Renesis, Freescale, Texas, uh, Microchip. All these are manufacturers, and we have eight-bit microcontrollers, sixteen-bit microcontrollers, thirty-two-bit microcontrollers. Okay. In DSP process. We have Texas manufacturers like Texas Instruments, Analog Devices, and Motorola. And CPLDs. We have if CPLDs and FPGA. We have manufacturers like uh, uh, Xilinx, uh, Altera, uh, Lattice, and Actel. And uh, general purpose like uh, we have uh, Intel, AMD, and Nvidia GPU. And ASIC like uh, ASIC like Intel. Lot of manufacturers there. I have mentioned only Intel here for a neural processing unit. And uh, for a SOC like System on Chip, we have Qualcomm and Broadcom chips. If you take Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi, uh, the Broadcom is a manufacturer. The chip was manufactured by Raspberry Pi chip was manufactured by the Broadcom company. And the Qualcomm they manufacture Snapdragon processors for mobile phones. Most of the mobile phone processors SOCs are from Qualcomm. So uh, when you take a general purpose processor, okay, when you go for an embedded system design, general purpose processor you cannot use a general purpose processor for an embedded system design. So Uh, uh, an embedded system, like uh, for an embedded system design, because an embedded system design is something like uh, which does only a specific task and which will have some time constraints, which has to execute the task within a particular time constraint. So that is an embedded system design. So you cannot use a general purpose processor for that. And GPU, uh, GPU can do a parallel processing a lot, parallel processing, but still GPU cannot be used alone. Okay, so it needs a CPU. Uh, uh, actually, it's a graphic processing unit. Uh, previously, they used only for graphics and for rendering kind of thing, like uh, for the animation or rendering kind of thing. But nowadays, they are using it for training purpose, like deep learning kind of thing. All the deep learning and the machine learning uh, for the parallel processing kind of application, they are using GPU nowadays. Okay, so these things cannot be used for an embedded system design. So if you want to use for an embedded system design, only you could use for microprocessor, microcontroller, or DSPs or FPGA or CPU or FPGA or Yes, SOC, SOC or NASI. Okay, only these things can be used, and general purpose processor cannot be used for an embedded system design. Okay, so coming to microprocessors, if you take a microprocessor, it is a chip. Okay, so like which has a CPU, like 8085 or 8086, which has a CPU, it is a chip. Okay, or the all the peripherals like UART, the timers, or or all are external chip. Like you need to integrate with a PCB. Okay, if you take a 8085 processor. You want will be external, timers will be external, and uh, like uh, the program memory, memory, everything will be an external chip. You have to integrate that with the PCB, printed circuit board. Okay, so which will cost a system design cost. So microprocessors nowadays it's absolute. 8085, 8086 is absolute. The first version of the Macintosh, the Mac version, the first Mac version was an 8086 microprocessor. Okay, nowadays it was absolute. So the microcontroller, when you come with microcontroller. Everything is available on chip. Okay, you have the CPU, uh, like the all the peripherals like the UART, the parallel port, and the control area network, the ADC and timers. Everything is on chip. Okay, so no need to have an external integrated circuits. Everything is on a single integrated circuit that comes in a microcontroller. Okay, but still it has some limitations. So like uh, it has a limited like uh, if you take an 8-bit processor, it cannot do a complex mathematical calculation. Microcontrollers cannot do a complex mathematical calculation, whereas DSP processor has a math capability. Math means multiply and accumulate. Okay, multiply and accumulate has a math capability, which could do a complex mathematical processing. Okay, DSP processor can do a complex mathematical processing. Okay, so it's mathematics on a chip. It could use for hard real-time constraints. When you when whenever you go for a real-time systems, okay. Real-time systems. You have two kind of real-time systems. One is the hard real-time system. Another is the soft real-time system. The hard real-time systems are time-bound. So time-bound, and if you miss a deadline, uh, it will uh, it will it will cause a havoc. Uh, a nuclear reactor is a hard real-time system, whereas in the aerospace, the aerodynamics and satellite kind of thing, like it's a hard real-time systems. Whereas mobile phone, it's a soft real-time systems. Okay, so missing a deadline. Uh, may degrade the performance of the system, so nothing that there will not be any human error, the human like uh, 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 error or like that. Uh, so missing a delay may only degrade the performance, whereas in hard real time system, missing a delay may cause an havoc. So that will uh, that may uh, cause some human death or like that. Okay, so that's a hard real time systems. 
So DSP can be used for a hard real-time systems and it could also process infinite things like you could interface a camera with a DSP processor or a video with a DSP processor. When you interface a video ca camera with a DSP processor, okay, so the camera will have 40 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Okay, so so 30 frames per second means like uh, uh, like uh, you, it, you you should, the the processor should have the capacity to capture 30 images and to process the 30 images and it has to provide the output. Okay, so uh, uh, it should have the capability to get the data data as well as to process the mathematical calculation, like the complex mathematical calculation, math calculations, the matrix calculations, because image will be represented in terms of a matrix. So complex matrix manipulations will be there. Uh, the variable transformations will be there, like variable transformation or percent transformer of like Fourier transformer or Laplace transform will be there. So this complex mathematical transform and microcontroller cannot do. Okay, only DSP processor can do, and DSP processor has a special interface to interface with the sensors. Okay. If you are clear with the difference between microprocessor and DSP, just type clear in the chat box. Okay, I will speak slowly. Billa Durga Bhavani, I will speak slowly. Okay, if you are clear with the uh, difference between a microcontroller and DSP processor, just type clear in the chat box. Clear in the chat box. Else, I will repeat. I will go with the majority. If it is clear, okay, I will. I assure you, please, please talk slowly, sir. Yes, okay, okay. Noted. The point is noted. Okay. Arthi says speak slowly. Okay. So if you are clear with the microcontrollers, if you are clear with the difference between the microcontroller and DSP, just type clear in the chat box. Clear in the chat box. Okay. Else I will repeat. I will go with the majority of the chat. I am just waiting for your chat. Jeevan Anand, thank you. Clear. Darshan, thank you. Nisha, thank you. I will go slow. I'll go slow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll go slow. Okay. I'll go slow. So why do we need a DSP processor? Okay. So uh, whenever you uh, when you come to a DSP processor, you have two kind of DSP processor. One is a fixed point DSP. Another is a floating point DSP. Okay. The fixed point DSP can do only fixed fixed point is nothing but like it's like integer like floating point will have the float values capability of doing floating point mathematical calculation is called uh, uh, can uh, can uh, floating point processor can do a complex uh, floating point mathematical calculation okay whereas fixed point can do like uh, so when you go with floating point processor you will get more accuracy and precision okay when you get you will get more accuracy for example you take an audio or a speech okay so it will be like the 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 value will be like it will be you will be getting a two dimensional array for if you take a two channel audio if you take a two channel audio the stream will be like two channel like arrays will be there and the values will be in floats okay if you truncate this value then you are definitely you are going to lose the signal okay so if you are going to store it as a float signal and if you are going to process then you are going to get more precision Okay, so we take the application of uh, 5.1 channel audio, okay, 5.1 channel audio and digital theater sound, like uh, even a very less sound you have to hear, like uh, so that kind of precision can be done only through the floating point DSPs. Okay, so whenever you need a precision, whenever you need a precision, and whenever you need a small size, and whenever you need a low power dissipation, because DSP processor uh, will work even at 3.3 volt. Normal microcontrollers will work at 5 volt, 8051 will work at 5 volt, uh, whereas the ARM 7 it's 3.3 volt, okay, and uh, the core voltage is 1.8 volt. DSP processor can work at 1.8 volt, which is a low power consumption. It can be battery operated for a long time, okay, and it could process the signals in real time. Real time in the sense like you could get the camera, process the signal, send it to the cloud, and when you go for a video streaming, the other end could view at the real time. Okay, so processing the signals in real time. So whenever you need a precision, uh, small in size and low power consumption, processing the signals in real time, you could go with the DSP processor. Okay, so coming to CPLDs and FPGAs, CPLD or control oriented. So wherever you use microcontrollers, you could go with CPLD, complex programmable logical devices, FPGAs or field programmable gate arrays. Okay. So wherever you use a DSP processor, you could use an FPGA, field programmable gate arrays, because it is data path oriented. Okay. So uh, 
then what is the difference between the microcontroller and so going with CPLD? So the, the advantage of going with CPLD is it could be reconfigurable. Okay, it is reconfigurable means you could customize the internal hardware. That's the advantage of CPLD. I I'll, I'll tell you an example. I'll take an example with the 8051, 8051 microcontroller. It has 40 pin IC. You take a 40 pin IC. The pins in the IC, you cannot change the uh, peripherals like uh, the no, the pins the, the peripheral pins like uh, UART pins. You cannot change. Okay, only that pin you could use it for a you you could use as a UART. And if you want an external, if you want an additional UART, then you have to go for a software UART. If you want three or four UARTs, then it will become more complicated. Then there is only there will be only less number of IOs. Okay, which will be already shared with some other devices. So you cannot use the ADP two ones. Whereas for CPLD, whereas, uh, whereas for CPLD, uh, you could like CPLD you will have more number of I/O pins. You could customize the I/O pin. Whatever the pin you want, you could use it as a new what. Okay. Whatever the architecture you want, you want ADP two architecture. You port ADP two architecture inside the CPLD. If you want a PIC architecture, you could port the PIC architecture inside the CPLD. Okay. It is tailor made. You could customize whatever you want through an hardware description language. Okay, and uh, even if you want ten new watts, you could use it. You could configure. You could reconfigure the I/O pins. Okay, uh, usually it comes with one forty four one forty four pins. Like hundred I/O pins will be there. Whereas eighty two will have only the I/O will be very less. Like uh, twenty four or twenty four I/O pins or thirty two pins depends upon the microcontroller you choose. 8021, uh, uh, 81, but CPLD will have more number of IO pins. You could customize whatever you want. You, uh, you could take any pin as input pin and any pin as output pin. You could customize the logic. Okay, so that's the advantage of CPLD. You could reconfigure by using the hardware description language. But speed programmable gate arrays, but you cannot do a complex mathematical calculation here because CPLD does not has a multipliers like it does not has a DSP unit. So we cannot do a complex mathematical calculation inside the CPLD. Whereas FPGA is data path oriented. Okay, FPGA is data path oriented. We could do a complex mathematical calculation inside. FPGA will replace DSP processor. So all applications which is possible on a DSP processor is also possible with the FPGA. The other advantage is it is reconfigurable. Okay, you could customize the pins. You could customize the IO pins. Whatever you want. Okay, it's just trailer made. Just trailer made. You could change the hardware, internal hardware. Whereas DSP cannot change the internal hardware, which, which is which is it is populated in the fab itself. Fabrication during the fabrication process, so there is nothing to change with the internal hardware. Whereas FPGA, you could reconfigure the way you want. I opens. You could make it as an input, or, or if you want, you could make it as an input. If you want, you could make it as an output. If you want the peripheral pin like SPA. Could make that pin as SP. If you want, you want to make that pin as you want. It could be it is tailor made. Okay. So if you are clear to this CPL and FPGA, just give me a clear in the chat box. Okay. I hope I think I'm I'm going slow. If I'm too fast, you just give me the command. I'll go through the command and I'll try to reduce my speed. Okay. So uh, if uh, if it is clear, like. If it is clear, just give me clear. Or if you want me to repeat, you just type repeat in the chat box. I will go with the majority. Okay. Madana says, sir, we will get this PPT. Uh, you will get the PPT on the Facebook group. Like I will be update, updating the notes on the Facebook group. Like uh, the PPT will be only as a PDF format. If you want PPT in PPT format, uh, then you have to go for the uh, internship. Okay. The source code will be uh, only for that. Uh, will not be available. But by going through the video, you could. Replica the source code. I'm sure you could replica the source code by going through the video. I will make the code as very simple. Okay, so you could, uh, if you want, you could. If you want that as a file, then you have to like you have to ask, access from the LMS portal. So clear. Thank you, thank you, Varun, thank you, uh, Tarak, thank you, Sham, thank you, Jaisal, thank you, Adriel, thank you, Abhishek, thank you, Abhishek, thank you, Vishnu, thank you, Shubhashri, Alex, thank you, Sumit, thank you. Malligar Jun, thank you. Abhishek, thank you. Karthik, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Difference between them is not clear. Okay. Abhinav Vanam, difference between them is not clear. Okay. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay. 
Okay, I will repeat the CPL in FPGA part. Okay, this again I will repeat, so not, not a problem. Okay, so uh, coming to FPGA technologies, like okay, uh, FPGA, I, I will repeat the difference between CPL and FPGA on the coming slide, not a problem. Okay, so coming to the technologies, like FPGA technologies, okay, there are different type of technologies available based on the memory, like volatile or non-volatile. Like uh, non-volatile means the program will remain even when you switch off the FPGA. Volatile means like the program will go off when you switch off the power to the FPGA. Okay, so that is SRAM technology. It is reprogrammable. Uh, like you need an external configuration circuit, like a PROM circuit or an SPA flash circuit to load the configuration inside the SRAM so that it will be reprogrammed every time when you switch on the FPGA. That is SRAM based technologies. Most of the Xilinx uh, Spartan 6 series or SRAM technologies, it needs an external PROM. Okay, it needs an external PROM or external SPA flash. Okay, plus some of these uh, FPGAs has an inbuilt flash memory like Spartan 3AN. N stands for non-volatile, which can which has a flash memory. So even when you power off and you switch on the power, like the program will be there. Okay, else you have to the SRAM. It needs an external memory, PROM memory or a SPA flash to configure the flash inside the FPG, to, uh, to configure the uh, program, program uh, flash. Okay. Anti-fuse is one time programmable, so it's non-volatile. So or like once you fuse it, that's all. Like uh, uh, it's generally it's used for product, like uh, it is not used, rarely it's a kind of thing, like anti-fuse technology. Okay. So these are the technologies. Okay. So coming to DSP and FPGA again, okay? like the, the other advantage of DSP and FPGA is FPGA is parallel, DSP is sequential. Okay? So since DSP uses the C language and the ASM language, they are sequential in structure. Whereas FPGA uses a hardware description language, it's, it has a concurrent like we could do a go for a parallel process in FPGA, provided the algorithm should also be in parallel. Okay? If, for example, you take a serial realization, FR filter, if you take an FR filter, if you want if you want to implement a FR filter on a DSP processor and a FPGA processor, okay, FPGA, if the, if, if the realization is parallel, then, like, when you go with the FPGA, the FPGA will give better performance, okay, it will complete 256 operation in a single clock cycle, FPGA will complete 256 operation in a single clock cycle, whereas DSP will take 256 clock cycles to complete the 256 operations. Okay, that is sequential. That is that is one advantage of FPG. So that it, it will have more performance, FPG will give you more performance because of parallel implementation. Okay. Provided the algorithm should also be in parallel. If the algorithm depends upon the previous inputs, then it is also going to be sequential. Okay. So in that case, in that case, it depends on the, the performance depends upon the type of clock you used, whether you operate the FPG with 50 megahertz or 100 megahertz, and what is the process like because the speed depends upon the clock. Okay. So when you take a PC, you the speed of the PC depends upon the 2.5 gigahertz or 1 gigahertz clock, 1 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz, 2.6 gigahertz. The speed depends upon the clock. So it depends upon the FPG clock. So if you check this example, this example, so, uh, to calculate the gravitational force, like G into M1 into M2 divided by X1 minus X2 the whole square plus Y1 minus Y2 the whole square. Okay. If you implement that in a CPU, it will take 8 cycles. I will tell you how, like G into M1 will take 1 cycle, this multiplication will take 1 cycle and M1 into M2 like this will take another multiplication, another cycle, X1 minus X2 will take 1 cycle. The whole square will take one cycle, plus will take one cycle, and y1 minus y2 will take one cycle, and the whole square will take one cycle, and this division will take one cycle. So totally eight cycles on a CPU. Well, when, the, when the same thing was implemented in the FPGA, by using the basic operation, it could be implemented in four cycles. Okay. Due to the parallel processing, okay, due to the parallelism, it could be implemented if you by it can be implemented in four cycles on a FPGA. If you use a compound operation, it could implement it on a three cycles. So that's the advantage of FPGA, like the mathematical calculation. 
will be can be processed parallelly on a FPGA versus in DSP it is sequential okay that's a, that's a big advantage of DSP or FPGA okay so coming to again the difference between DSP and FPGA so whenever you have a higher performance whenever you need a higher performance and whenever you have a parallel algorithm then go with the FPGA okay whenever you need higher performance and a parallel algorithm go with the FPGA and you, if you want to customize your design for speed and cost then you choose an FPGA when you choose an FPGA it will it will reduce the number of components on a PCB for example I, I told you like microprocessor will take uh, it's, give me a minute uh, it's showing no data give me a minute okay okay so uh, uh, like when to use DSP in FPG like uh, uh, I, I, I told you about micro microprocessors microprocessors everything is external like it takes uh, like you need a PCB like similarly uh, when you use an FPGA, it could reduce the number of chips. I'll show you with one example. Okay. So, uh, if it is clear, uh, if it is clear, just type uh, clear the chat box. It's, thank you, Ronak. Thank you, Ronak. Thank you. Uh, not clear. Poonam uh, slides are not clearly visible. Sorry, like uh, it shows some poor connection on my side. Okay. Uh, okay. Is, is, are you with me? Are you with me? Like, if it is clear, just type clear in the chat box. Clear in the chat box. Else, I'll, I'm waiting for your comment. Like, uh, if it is, if you're clear till now, till the slide, just type clear in the chat box. Thank you, Sabram. Thank you, Sabram. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you, Swapnil. Live is fast. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Litik, Likita. Thank you, Likita. Thank you, Malik Arjun. Thank you, Danish. Thank you, Maurya. Okay. So, uh, I'll show you an example. Like the, This is a traditional embedded system design board. Okay. It uses a DSP processor, uh, TMS320 or 611 series. I will tell you what is the difference of going with DSP and FPG. Okay. What is the difference of going with DSP and FPG? If you, if you, if you go through this board, uh, we have a DSP processor, we have a DSP processor and we have the additional components like power supply, we have additional components like power supply and uh, we have interrupt controller and timer unit and audio product and memory controller okay, and Ethernet Mac for interfacing with uh, the uh, internet okay, and uh, we have SRAMs and SDRAMs memories and we have display controller. Okay. So this is a traditional embedded system design using a DSP processor. Uh, in this processor, okay, in this process, in this in this board, the power supply, the power supply cannot be incorporated inside an FPG. You cannot you cannot design a power supply inside an FPG because it will dissipate more heat. That silicon and uh, like uh, uh, so you cannot keep that inside an FPG. Audio product will have an analog signal processing. Okay, whenever we go with audio product, it also has an analog ground and digital ground. So uh, whereas FPGA is it's purely digital so it's so when you bring this analog to an fpg then that will mix up and it will cause like noise emi difference and noises will be there so audio product, audio product cannot be uh, uh, cannot be designed inside an fpg okay and srams and sdrams srams and sdrams like uh, they will occupy memory will take more silicon area so that is it is not advised to to design a memory inside an fpg it will take more number of gates and it will occupy the silicon area. So the rest of the thing like the Ethernet Mac, the memory controller, the address decode unit, the interrupt controller, timer, UR, display controller, everything can be incorporated in a single chip. Okay. So that's the advantage of FPG. You, the rest of the part you keep it, you just connect it together. By, by this way, you could reduce the number of chips, number of integrated circuits on the PCB. Okay. And you could also reduce uh, since uh, since you're reducing the chips, like the you could reduce the failure rate. Uh, you could reduce the uh, like uh, like you could reduce the uh, chip cost. Okay, and the like the precision like you could improve the performance of the system. 
So that's the advantage of going with an FPG and like it is a configuration configurable system on chip. Okay. So everything is on chip. Whatever the thing you want, you can design on inside an FPG. That's the main thing. Advantage. So the rest of the part you could keep it on the external and you could make your own design. So that's the advantage of going with FPG. Okay. So uh, uh, so so in order to compete with FPG, so the 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 DSP the DSP manufacturers and the microcontroller microcontroller manufacturers they came up with the uh, more number of cores in a single package for parallel processing because FPG can do parallel processing. So in order to compete with the FPG, they don't want to miss the market. So they come up with the uh, multiple core on a single package like quad core processor. To, uh, if the core is same, then it is symmetric multiprocessing. If the core is different, then it is asymmetric multiprocessing. Okay. Like symmetric means like uh, you will have the same core. Like uh, for one example is with the Blackfin a BF561 is the, it's a DSP processor from the analog devices. It has the same core on the plus the TA OMAP series has an ARM core and a DSP core on a single chip. Okay, Zinc has an ARM core on a single chip which was ARM core, like you could also have a DSP core on it. So that is an asymmetric processing. So asymmetric means you could have a different core. Okay, every processor has a core architecture, like ARM, ARM is an architecture, ATP is an architecture, PIC is an architecture. So if the core is same, it is symmetric, the core is different, it is asymmetric. Okay. So this uh, DSP processor, they came up with uh, an SOC package where if you check this, uh, if you check this package like the Snapdragon, the one which you are viewing is a Snapdragon, um, the, the bottom is the ISP part, okay. image signal uh, processing unit and NPU for a neural processing unit for object recognition kind of thing and GPU for gaming uh, graphic processing unit and DSP for audio or like uh, audio and for the to kind of speakers and for, uh, for mic kind of thing and 4G and Wi-Fi and connectivity multimedia as well as CPU and video products. So everything on a single chip, everything on a single chip. So which has for gaming, you could uh, on a on a mobile phone like so. Uh, so this kind of package is called SOC system on chip. So uh, TA released WOMAP in 2010. So most of the mobile phones use WOMAP series, TA WOMAP series. And the Snapdragon is like now, uh, now the mobile market was occupied by Snapdragon, uh, the Qualcomm, Qualcomm as well as the other broadcast manufacturers. Okay. Uh, so if you, if you check in this example, like um, everything is on chip. So what the point, what I want to tell is uh, like it is a multi-core chip, ARM11 and a DSP core. If you check the chip, uh, everything is on chip, like the GPS and the 812 interface, uh, the wireless LAN interface and Bluetooth and the telecommunication chipset and the audio product. So everything is on a single chip. Just connect, that's all. If you open a mobile phone, you could see only a single, only a few chips inside the mobile phones, okay? Because it's a SOC. Okay, so that's system on chip, camera interface, and uh, memory card interface, and power like uh, battery uh, management circuits. So everything, NAND flash, mobile radio, everything comes with a, um, a single package, so that's the system system on chip. Okay, so let's go see. And uh, how is FPJ different from ASICs? Okay, ASICs are nothing but application specific integrated circuits. Uh, application specific integrated circuits, like uh, a chip which are manufactured only for that purpose. Only for that purpose. For example, if you provide the HDL codes to the uh, to the manufacturers, to the FPGA, to the, to the Xilinx or Altera, uh, the fab manufacturers, uh, they will manufacture uh, the chip for your code, okay, for your application. So that kind of thing is called application specific integrated circuits. The NRE cost will be very, very high. You could give, you could manufacture an ASIC one and only if you have a large number of quantity, okay. So like millions of pieces, only if you have millions of pieces you could reduce the unit per price. Else, the designing cost will, will be very high. The design, the NRE cost, the non-recurring engineering cost, okay? The one-time cost, the one-time cost of making this ASIC will be very, very high, okay? So, whereas in FPGA, whatever the thing which you do with ASIC is also possible with FPGA, okay? So, FPGA, you could get it in the market and you could write the, your own code. 
So that's the difference between ASIC and FPGA. Okay. So again, coming to so the comparison chart. If I come with the comparison chart, like uh, if the microcontrollers will have low performance, like uh, it cannot do a complex mathematical model on the microcontrollers. Okay. So some of the microcontrollers like ARM9 and uh, ARM Cortex, they come up with all. They also have a DSP engine inside. Which could process a simple DSP calculations like a camera interface and uh, like uh, so simple mathematical calculation, but not a complex mathematical calculation. If you want a complex mathematical calculation, then you have to go with the DSP processor. Okay, so the performance will be very low on microcontroller. So if you want to implement a simple door lock, okay, then microcontroller will be cheaper. Will be cheaper. Like you could get a microcontroller for forty rupees. Forty rupees um, with the eight pin microcontroller is a Lot of toys are using microcontrollers. Uh, even for twenty rupees, like twenty rupees, you could get a microcontroller. Okay, so the cost will be very low. Depends upon the application. Okay, so DSP. Whenever you want to implement uh, like audio or speech or uh, kind of like wherever you need more uh, precision, accuracy, and uh, wherever you need a complex mathematical calculation, you can go with a DSP processor. Okay, like for example, uh, the audio system, audio system on your phone. And it's a DSP processor, system on chip. Mobile phones use most of the mobile phones use a system on chip. Okay, so cost wise it will be higher. The individual cost of the SOC will be higher. You have to go for quantity to reduce the price. And as uh, most of the SOC will not be available for, uh, it will not be available for the general public like uh, for the consumer. It is not available for SOCs or not available for consumer. You have to make uh, like uh, an agreement with the manufacturer. For example, you take Raspberry Pi. Okay, the chip you cannot purchase. The Broadcom chip on Raspberry Pi, you cannot purchase from the market because, like, uh, it is an SOC. Like, you have to make an agreement to at least purchase uh, one million chips from them. Then they will they will release the sheet and they will release the uh, they will give approval to purchase. Okay, so SOC will not be snap even Snapdragon. You cannot even contact them through phone. Okay, the Qualcomm company or the Broadcom company, if, if they will not, they will never even put the phone number. You cannot even contact for even for sample piece. You cannot get an SOC. Okay, ASIC, like if they like ASIC is like uh, they export specific application. This is this also like uh, it is but like um, uh, it, the unit cost. Like okay, uh, it depends upon the quantity. In our case, like the neural network oscillator that from Intel is an ASIC. Okay. So the the if you check the FPGA, the performance will be much more better in FPGA because like uh, if you go for ultra scale FPGA device, uh, you go for digikey.com, go for digikey.com and you just check for the price for the for the Vertex Seven. The pricing will be around twenty four thousand dollars. Like when I when I check yesterday, like the the cost of the processor is twenty four thousand USD. Okay, thousand USD is seventy three thousand rupees. So twenty-four thousand is almost nearly around the uh, twenty lakh rupees. Okay. So uh, give me a minute. Okay. So I have a poor internet connection. Okay. So uh, like if you if you check the pricing on uh, digigi.com, the FPGA pricing on digigi.com, like uh, the pricing of Vertex Seven will come around twenty-four lakh rupees. A single chip, a single chip of FPGA cost comes around twenty thousand, twenty lakh rupees, twenty lakh rupees, and there is also FPGA available for even for uh, five hundred to six hundred rupees. The Spartan three will cost only six hundred rupees. Uh, uh, Spartan three and three uh, AM will cost only six hundred to seven hundred rupees. Okay. Whereas the Vertex uh, seven series will one chip will cost around uh, twenty, uh, like uh, twenty uh, twenty lakh rupee. Okay. So what would be the application which uses that? Okay, it will be a, uh, definitely it is not a mobile phone or uh, kind of thing. So uh, the if you the it, the aerospace or uh, the satellite based design or rocket science or uh, or medical systems like uh, CT scans and, uh, and or MRI devices or uh, only a complicated kind of thing like the hard reality systems can can put afford that kind of APG. Okay, so the cost wise. FPGA will be much much higher. Okay, you could check the pricing of FPGA on a Digikey website, uh, a website called Digikey.in, which sells the FPGA online. 
or a mouse dot in. Okay, so if you search for Vertex 7 Ultra Scale FPGAs, uh, definitely it will be around 24,000 USDs. Okay, so the cost will come around 20 lakh or uh, even there are FPGAs more than that. Okay, which has rocket IOs and uh, high speed transceivers. So if you are clear with this uh, chart, and tell just give me clear in the chat box. I'll go for the next. We are running out of time. I'm sorry, like uh, we are running out of time. I will try to complete as much as possible. Okay. Uh, what is the price of pink? Is it one will cost comes around 12,000 rupees? Sayed. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kumar. Thank you, Kumar Swami. Thank you. Like, uh, give me a clear, give me a clear in the chat box. Uh, if this uh, is uh, uh, like, if you are clear with this. Thank you, Ratan. Thank you, Purshod Mumbredi. Thank you, Chetan. Thank you, Raju. Thank you, uh, Abiram uh, MBS. Thank you, Rabikant. Thank you, Mayur. Thank you, uh, Shri Likita. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you, Vikash. Thank you. Thank you, Garo. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, coming to history of FPG, and uh, let me check the slides. Like uh, so far, uh, we are in thirty. Like uh, still, uh, good, good. Okay. Uh, still, we have uh, around fifteen slides to go through. Go through like history of FPG. Okay. Anyhow. Uh, like uh, I will try to complete within uh, 10 to 15 minutes of time. So the time is now uh, uh, it's coming around uh, nine. So like I will complete within 9:15. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, okay. So uh, coming to history of FPG. Okay. Coming to history of FPG. Like uh, uh, we have uh, it starts. Starts with programmable logical arrays, okay? programmable array lo logical arrays and programmable array logic, and then PLDs, programmable logical devices, and then complex programmable logical devices, and then field programmable gate arrays. Okay? This is the history of FPG. The programmable logical arrays is nothing but you will have a programmable AND plane and programmable OR plane. Okay? So you could implement a Boolean circuit inside the PLA by using a, by fusing the fuses. Okay? On programmable logic and plane and programmable R plane. So that is programmable logical array. On PAL, that is programmable array logic, the R plane is fixed and the AND plane is programmable. Okay. So you could also write the code like uh, for fusing, for setting the fuse. Like if you want to implement these things are used to implement a Boolean functions, okay, Boolean logic or a truth table, the complex truth table. You could reduce the truth table by using Carnac map. And finally, after reducing the through Carnac map, you will be getting an equation. So that equation you could apply on a PLA or a PAL, okay? programmable logical array and programmable array logic. PLDs, the PLA, like it, ha it has the PLA as well as the memory, like the two flip flops and multiplexers added together to form programmable logical devices, which, is, which, will, which, will, which will also have a memory, okay? PLDs. Whereas PLA and PAL will not have a memory, which PLDs will have a memory. And the complex of a PLD is the CPLD, complex programmable logical devices. Which will have like uh, like which has uh, like the uh, PLDs as well as the routing matrix and the I/O blocks. Okay, CPLDs and FPGAs. FPGAs are gate arrays. Uh, after CPLD, it is gate arrays. Then the field program gate arrays. Okay, so this this is the history of FPGA. Okay, so uh, this is the this is how PLA works. Like uh, you have AND plane and OR plane, and you have to fuse this plane. Like for example, uh, like if you check this. One like the first the first one is y dash of y dash into z like it was fused here and here okay so this is inverted y is inverted here and z it comes straight so we have we we have fused this two point so we got y dash into z okay and for this you get y dash into z plus we have fused here as well as here so here is here we got x y x and y okay so x y plus y dash so this is an example for PLA. Okay. Now, the R plane is fixed. 
the arc plane is fixed and all this you have you might have covered up in the digital circuits like the arc plane is fixed and the arc plane is programmable okay you could use a software called palasm uh, pal asm software design software to like uh, it's a pal assembler where you could uh, write the equations uh, it has a separate language where uh, you could convert the boolean equation to a fuse pattern and it will be available as a jtag file and this jtag file will be downloaded by using a programmer okay? i'll show you the program it will be like this the pld program like the pal chips and the pld chips but nowadays these things are not used in the market okay on the olden days like they used to give uh, the ic with a jtag file okay if some programmer is there they will they will it will have a pld ic with the jtag file you have to use this programmer to fuse the programmer inside this pld device and you could use it okay so which will have a truth table which will have the truth table so pld is a combination of logic device the pla as well as the memory device okay uh, memory device so it uses a technology like the same kind of whatever the technology uh, the um, fpga uses pld also uses like sram technology or a flash memory technology or a eprom technology or an anti fuse technology contain programmable okay the software the language is cupl and palasm and these are all the softwares and this is and like it, the program will be like this okay so the next comes the cplds okay the cplds for cplds uh, uh, they the for cplds the language has been improved like they, they use a hardware description language there are two kind of like uh, verilog and bhl we have we have verilog is also a hardware description language and bhl is an also a hardware description language Okay, so uh, uh, the one advantage of this language is, so these are the, these are the language which could configure the hardware of the IC. Okay, and another thing is, uh, whatever the version of the IC is, like the same code can be used for Spartan three. The same code can also be used for Vertex. The same code can also be used for the other manufacturers. Okay, not only for Xilinx, for the it it is like it is not the platform specific. It is also like you could also vendor like you could, vendor compatibility is also there. You could use the same code with uh, Xilinx and same code with the Altera device. Okay, so that vendor comp compatibility is also there. So it uses hardware description language. If you take the architecture of the CPLD, it, it will have a PAL block as well as the I/O block plus a programmable interconnect. Okay, I will cover you the CPLD basics on the next thing, next next block. Okay, so if you check. We have logic blocks. Okay, we have logic blocks here. Uh, logic blocks, and we have I/O blocks. This I/O blocks will be connected with the I/O pin of the CPLD. Logic blocks. Through this logic blocks, you could implement any logic. Okay, if you want an ALU, you could design an ALU. If you want an 8051 architecture, you could design an 8051 architecture by using this logic blocks and the clock routing and the routing matrix. By using this logic blocks, clock routing and routing matrix. you could design any kind of microcontroller architecture you want okay and for fpga there is no memory there is no uh, uh, dsps here okay there is no dsp here and there is no core processor here okay there is no core processor core is not there in cpl architecture okay whereas in fpga architecture these are io block these are the logic blocks okay and these are the io blocks the top side and the left hand side these are io blocks which is connected to the io pins okay and we have clock routing to supply clocks to the logic blocks and the routing matrix is used to connect the logic blocks okay which will have millions of gates if it takes part on 3 uh, 500e it has 5 lakh gates 250e it has 2 lakh and 50000 gates okay So uh, uh, the higher vendor, higher version, it's like more like it has even ten, ten uh, lakh gates and fifty lakh gates of that FPGA, fifty lakh gates of that. With that gates, you could make whatever you want, whatever you want, like whatever the architecture you want, whatever the peripherals you want. If you want a UART controller, design a UART controller. If you want a PCA controller, you could design a PCA controller. Whatever the controller, whatever. It depends upon the application. It depends upon the application you want, like the context. It depends upon the context. Okay, so on the routing matrix, okay, which is used. Uh, apart from this, you also have a multiplayers and DSP blocks. Multiplayers is used to do mathematical calculation, complex mathematical calculation. And this multiplayer can all uh, this multiplayer blocks can be connected with another multiplayer blocks to 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 make a complex multiplayers so that FPJ can can do complex mathematical calculation and DSP blocks like uh, uh, and then you have a core. 
Okay, the core is nothing but the processor core. Two kind of core it will support. One is the soft core processor, another is the hard core processor. Soft core means the core is created by the BHL core. Okay, whereas the hard core processor means the core is manufactured during the fabrication process itself. If you take a zinc FPGA, it has an arm core which is fabricated on the fabrication process itself. Okay, if you take power PC on a Vitex, is a hard core processor which is fabricated on the fab itself, fabrication process itself. Whereas micro base on Spartan is a hard core processor uh, which is created by the IP cores through the software. Okay, the core is different. The processor core we could it supports both hard core processor and soft core processor. Okay. So uh, all these things, like when you go on the go, like on the 21 days challenge, like you will be getting more familiar with the things. So if you, so if you are not familiar with the processor code, no, nothing to worry. Uh, you just go through the presentation again, and like uh, on the on the next day and next day when we work with the uh, applications, we will be going through the same thing again and again. So this will definitely will you will get clear with this uh, topic. Okay. So. Uh, coming to the internal circuit of a configurational logic block, okay. it has only the lookup tables and uh, uh, like flip flops for memory and for latch and for multiplexers. Okay. So, with this, you could construct any two table you want. Okay. And uh, DSP blocks has adders and multipliers. It has adders and multipliers. DSP blocks can be merged with other DSP blocks and you could increase the uh, capability of multiplication and addition. Through routing matrix, so that is the advantage of TSP blocks. Block RAM is for memory, like uh, the it's like an SRAM. Okay, SRAM is it's a volatile memory, so you could use it for as a, uh, a data memory during the uh, during the application process. Block RAM and hard cores. Right, you could also use as the program memory part, and block RAM can also be used for the program part. And uh, like hard cores are the thing which you, which is done on the manufacturing process itself. Like the ARM part, ARM core is is manufactured uh, on the fabrication part and the PCI bus, okay, uh, and the Ethernet and the Ethernet transceivers, high speed transceivers. That everything is fabricated on the uh, fab, uh, fab itself. Okay, so how are the how is the difference between a PLD, CPD, and FPG? PLD will have less number of gates. CPD 200 to 2000 gates and FPGA 1000 to 1 lakh gates. Okay, CPLD, wherever you use microcontroller, you could go with CPLD. Uh, wherever you want to interface with FPGA, then it's go with uh, a high performance DSP processor. Wherever you want to implement uh, with DSP processor, you could go with FPGA. Okay, so uh, when you go for long, large scale manufacturing and if you have any custom design, then it's go with a reconfigured device. These are 10 mm. For example, if you have only 10, if you want to implement only 10 product, okay. No need to go for a higher quantity, then you could choose this kind of ICs like CPLDs and FPGAs. Okay, CPLDs and FPGAs. Otherwise, else you could, you could go with the microcontroller itself. It depends upon the context, what kind of application you want, and what kind of cost you want. Like, what are the constraints? If you have any constraints, then you could come up with these devices, CPLDs and FPGAs. Okay. So, oh, these are the list of company manufacturing FPGAs, Xilinx, Altera, Actel, and Natis. This program we will be covering up only with Xilinx. We are not going to cover up with Altera. Altera was uh, like, uh, it's currently now it is Intel, like uh, the Intel, uh, uh, Altera, Lattice, we are not going to cover up. So, Intel purchased Altera. Okay. So, these are all the portfolios from Xilinx, Spartan, 45NM technology, 28NM technology, and 20NM technology. And 60 nm technology like uh, Spartan series 20 nm 40 nm 45 nm stands for nanometers like uh, number of uh, uh, MOSFETs inside the FPGA okay number of MOSFETs inside the chip integrated circuits okay so uh, only two more slides is there okay, only two more slides is there uh, if you're clear with this uh, if you're clear with this uh, help this point you just give me uh, uh, clear the chat box. So we will be covering the next two slides in the next five minutes of time. So is it clear? Is it clear? 
So sorry for the delay. Like uh, most probably, I will stick on the time tomorrow. Like I will complete the session with 45 minutes of time. I'm really sorry for this. Uh, so thank thank you for your time. And uh, is it clear? Is it clear? Okay. Thank you, Pravalika. Thank you, Jashwan. Thank you, Sudanshu. Thank you, Sudanshu. Prasad, thank you. Prasad, video is lagging sometimes. Thank you. Noted. Ram Krishna, Sunday, thank you. Sri Litika, Likita, thank you. Abhishek, clear. Albert, clear. Thank you. Tarak, Munit, okay. Okay, selection of packages, okay. Every FPJ chip will come with a package. Okay, package is nothing but the DLM, DIP, DIP stands for DLM line package. FPJ, uh, there is no DIP is available. For example, you take AT51. It comes with dual in line package, okay. Plus the Atma microcontroller and Arduino board, okay. If you take an Arduino microcontroller, uh, Arduino board, like uh, the, it uses an Atma microcontroller, which is a DIP package, okay. So FPGAs and CPUs are available only on the quad flat package, quad flat package, and the PLCC package and the BG only, not even SOIC. You, you won't more small outline integrated circuits. Only these packages are available, and these packages require a different kind of kind of sorting station. Like you need a sorting station for a package for BGA, you need a O1, which will cost uh, at least one pro rupee. So you cannot uh, solder the BGAC. So you need to take a stencil and you have to give it to a assembly house. So they will make it for you. Like for for soldering a single chip, they will ask thousand to two thousand rupees for a BGA. Okay, for part flat package, you could put it on. If you if you are if you are well versed with soldering, you could go use a soldering station. Okay, for a corporate package, PLCC, uh, PLCC is also like a very limited. Only CPLDs are available in PLCC package. FPGAs is not available on uh, maybe the less number of gates like the Spartan three series or two series will be available in the PLCC package. First, only quad package or a thin quad package or a BGA or only these two things will be, the package will be available. Okay, and the processor selection criteria when uh, whenever you choose an FPGA. You have to go for the first. You have to choose the development tools. What kind of development tool you are going to use? ISC or Vivado or a platform studio or or a Pink Pink or a Python kind of thing. First, you have to choose the development tools. And number of IOs. How many IOs you record for your project? Like every FPJ will come with come up with a pin like 144 pin IOs or 256 pins or 328 pins. So these are the number of IOs you want and the performance. What is the speed it could support like the, like 50 hertz or 100 hertz or under 100 clock okay and the cost there are fpgs available for even for 500 rupees and fpg which is available for 24 lakh rupees okay a single chip cost of 20 lakh rupee you can check the cost on the digi side okay so depending upon the application okay if, if you are going to have design a, a mri scan or ct scan kind of thing or like uh, uh, or aerospace design or satellite based application, then it is go with the higher cost, okay, operating system. And what kind of operating system you want, like the Zinc, if you take Zinc, Zinc also supports, uh, it has an ARM core inside, which which could support the Windows kind of operating system, Windows CE or Windows Embedded XP kind of operating system. At the same time, it could also support uh, support the Linux kind of operating system, okay. So, oh, oh, but some processor like Spartan 6 will not support Windows, Windows, it will support only a Linux based uh, microcontroller Linux, MISI Linux based operating system, like Linux based operating system, Spartan 6. So, what kind of operating system if you want? First, you design whether you need an operating system, okay? Because uh, even without operating system, you could you could, you could operate. Hardware tools, if you choose a BGA package, then you need a O1 to mount the IC, okay? Else, you have to find a source to mount the IC. So, that's what kind of hardware. If you don't want to go with the hardware, if you don't want to go with O1, then you could choose a package with a package where you could do a soldering. Okay, and peripherals like what kind of peripherals you want, a power consumption, uh, whether it could be operated for 3.3 volt or 1.8 volt, 1.2 volt, uh, even there are FPGAs which could operate the core voltage at 1.2 volt, okay, which could be battery operated for a long time, and supply reputation like, uh, like, like supply reputation is like you always go with the any two, like uh, the Xilinx and the Altera. Uh, the lattice and the other thing like uh, there are a lot of manufacturers there, but it's better to go with the best manufacturers because uh, whenever you go with a go up with a design, it will take some time. Okay, so uh, if they become if they make the IC obsolete within two years, then you have to redesign the work, which will cost which which will which will cost you the time and which will cost you the money for redesigning. 
So always go with the best suppliers like the Xilinx. Uh, we used to go with only Xilinx and Altira, not even we, uh, the Actel FPG or uh, the Lattice FPG. Okay. That's also an important thing. Okay. So the tools we will be learning on this uh, on this 21 days challenge is Xilinx ISC, Xilinx XPS, Vivado and Python productivity. Join the Facebook group. I will provide you the link for the Xilinx ISC as well as for the Vivado where you could download the Vivado software and Xilinx ISC software. And I will also send you uh, an installation video on the group so that you could, on going through the video, you could install the ISC and XPS so that uh, XPS and Vivado uh, so that you could practice on your own time. Okay. The videos will be available only for three or four days for, uh, for this challenge. After that, it will be removed. Okay, so after that, it will be removed. So you have to learn within four days. If you want more than that, then you have to come to the learning management solution like LMS platform, which is also like it is also not going to be much more price. It just find rupees with a printed certificate, okay, with eighteen percent GST. Where you will be access again, the access is limited. The access will be for only for three months to make you learn. Otherwise, if we give a lifetime access, you will be learning the same thing for lifetime. So we want you to learn as much as fast as like as soon as possible. And if in case if you want an extension, we could allow it for one time, not more than that. Okay. So all this we have a recorded video, and the, the cost is also not too high. It's only 500 rupees. Okay. For the 30 days challenge with the extra bonus. So practice on your one time. Uh, so we'll go for a. I'll complete this. Uh, I'll session this. I will take a QA and session and then we will I'll, I'll, we'll go off. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and thank you always. Bhavani Reddy, thank you. Bhavani Reddy, thank you. Rashmi. Uh, which FPJ boards, Amando, which FPJ board will you address for practical activities in this master class? Very long, Vigachi language. The Armando Sanpa. Armando Sanpa, like we will be using Vigachi language and I am going to use the Spartan 6 board and uh, Spartan 6 FPGA board with a DDR memory which could do so that we could store the image and we could process them because to store the image we need a memory so I need a board with memory so I am going to use the Spartan 6 FPGA board with a memory and the pink board for the python program I am going to use a pink from digital Inc. so uh, which is which you could port a python uh, operating system uh, which you could port a pink OS is available on the internet and you could I will also provide you the step by steps how to do that okay so, uh, thank you, thank you, Revanth, thank you, Bumidi Sujata. Sujata, uh, I'm so sorry, like if I have pronounced your name wrong, I'm sorry, like, um, sorry for that. Murugeshan, thank you. Murugeshan, thank you. So, I will take this questions. I'll take the questions now, like, okay. So, uh, thank you, Ramesh. Thank you, Rajat. Thank you, Rashmi. Uh, unable to join Telegram group. Okay, thank you, Shishma. Thank you, Shishma. Thank you, Patan. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Anand Mohan, not using Facebook. Okay. Namin Kumar, thank you. Jasmine, thank you. Sneha, thank you. Shishma, thank you. Uh, and uh, Edika, Sanju Edika, thank you. Bhavani Reddy, thank you. Anikta Imi, thank you. Kalyan, thank you. Vikas, thank you. And I have a question, so I will take at least 5 to 10 questions today. Like, uh, what about system will uh, like very long uh, we will have a session separately like uh, probably on within a couple of months within a couple of months i'm not sure when but we will have not a problem uh, thank you it's a software free guru prasad deshpande yes the software you could download for free from xilinx okay i'll provide you the link on the facebook group okay so uh, the pdf slides the pdf slides will be available there and also I will provide you the link and I also I will provide you the thing. Uh, but source code, like source, uh, all the things I will put it on the group, like source code, like uh, will be available only on that uh, channel, like LMS channel. But you could go, you could practice the source code from the video, video itself. It will be very clear. I'm sure about that. I will make, ensure that you could make the code by seeing, going through the video. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kumar. Thank you. Apula Ravi, thank you. Apula Ravi, thank you. Model, thank you. Model, thank you. Uh, Abish, do we need hardware? Uh, do we need hardware? Kanu, Abhishek, Kanuju, Abhishek, do we need hardware? Uh, if it is, if you had a, have a hardware, it is better. It is better, but 
I will check like uh, I will try to put some simulation files, but uh, some of the things which we have to do only in hardware. Okay, I will try to find the low cost board and I'll suggest to you that. Okay. Thank you, Rashmi. Thank you, uh, Gautam. FP link, FP link is there in the PPT. If you want, should we buy the boards for training Abiram? Uh, I will I will recommend I will I will I will I will tell you. I will tell you. Give me give me two days of time. I will research and I'll tell you. Like I'll tell you the low cost thing. Nitish, thank you. Nitish, Tarok Gopani, thank you. So uh, Kalam, thank you. Kalam, thank you. Sh Shadana Savanayanam, thank you. Okay. How would we practice the program? The practice Sveta, like you could Sveta, you could practice the program on Xilinx ISC as well as the Vivado. You could download the software. I will provide you the link on the FP group. Okay, from Xilinx, you have to create an account. It is free. You just create an account. You just download. Otherwise, just go for Google and type Xilinx ISC download and Vivado down download. You will get a link. It will be on 6 GB or 20 GB. Okay, you have to download the software. You will make a registration. You have to download the software. And you could practice the software. You could practice on it. Online simulators, I'm not sure about that. Ask Tim Davis, I'm not sure about that. We have online simulators, I'm not sure about that, but you could check on the website. Fascinating Nazar, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Also, provide the link. Okay, shall we need to buy FPGA board, FPGA software stupid? Uh, Umang Panchal, I will, I will let you know, Umang Panchal, like, uh, I, will, I, will, I will check for any low cost boards and I will let you know. Okay, do we have online simulators? Okay. Application in aerospace. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your time and thank you for your time. Uh, uh, with this, I close the session. Thank you. Uh, uh, see you on like. Uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, until then, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Until then, bye bye.